What's going on YouTube, Metal Complex here, and today I've got a review of a pretty interesting knife from uh, CRKT or Columbia River Knife and Tool. This is the CRKT Hootenanny. Let me turn that over so you can get a good look there. This is a Ken Onion design knife. I'm going to close up on that model number there so that uh, for those of you who don't want to Google search Hootenanny, you can just type in that model number. Uh, this is a Ken Onion design knife uh, that uh, was apparently designed, oh, I just read a review online with somebody who talked with Ken Onion about this, as a small game processing folding knife. And uh, that's interesting. I, I mean, I think it's got um, applications for a, for a lot of different things, but we'll talk about that. Uh, let's do the size comparison with the Manix 2 here. Here's uh, the first reason that I really enjoy this knife. It is almost exactly the same length. Um, as the uh, Manix 2. This knife overall is about 7.89 inches. I mean, it's basically 8 inches. It's really, really close. And, and the Manix 2 is 8 inches overall. Uh, blade stock, you know, the Manix is supposed to be 0.13. Unfortunately, since I only have one hand that's not holding the camera, can't show, but I think you can tell. This is also supposed to be 0.13, and I can tell you, I mean, most people watching can see there, this one versus this one, the um, the uh, Hootenanny certainly seems to be thicker, but they're both supposed to be 0.13. The Manix to me looks like 0.12, and this looks like 0.14. That's a little thicker. But in any case, uh, certainly not overly thick or overly thin. So uh, let's talk about the, uh, the uh, handle materials here. Um, this looks like... Car it might be carbon fiber, but it's actually a like a fish scale textured. And I don't know if you can see... But there are actually lines within that texturing. It's actually really nice looking. And it's just a, uh, it says glass reinforced nylon. So I don't know the difference between glass reinforced nylon and fiberglass reinforced nylon, like on the Spyderco FRN models. But I, it looks nice, and I'm sure it'll hold up just fine. Uh, this bolster here is steel, and that oversized pivot is also steel. Then you've got some body screws. You've got a partially open back with a backspacer back here with some jimping on it. And then the other side is uh, much the same as the front, but you have a kind of a bolster frame lock here. And uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go on to the action. I'm sure a lot of you saw when I uh, opened the knife the first time, the... That was like some unnecessary coolness that I was trying to do there. Uh, that little symbol right there means IKBS, um, uh, or a, it's a bearing system is what it runs on. And let me tell you, the action on this for what it costs, which by the way at Blade HQ is about 45 bucks, is really awesome. I mean, they've got that detent dialed in. It's You know, it's not quite like ZT good. Some of you may not like ZT. I love ZT's detents. It's not quite ZT good, but man, it feels great. Uh, the detent is not too light, not too heavy. It's not one to shake out of there, you know, but man, it's easy to deploy. It feels great. Um, and uh, that uh, that lock up there, this is pretty new. This is one of the service guy's knives. He, he just walked up to me and said, hey, is this a good knife? And uh, yeah, it is a good knife, but Anyways, more details on that. It's locking up. Looks like in my light at about 65%, something like that. It's pretty nice. I mean, you know, it doesn't have the traditional cutout of a frame lock, you know, with the nature of how this is designed. So you've got thin material down here, so it's pretty easy to engage and disengage. But, you know, because it has more of a frame lock design at the top, you have more room uh, for the surface of that to engage the blade tang, which uh, leads to a little more feeling of security uh, when the blade is locked in. And by the way, there is no blade play on this thing whatsoever. And uh, it falls, you know, the, the bearings actually do their job. I mean, this thing is, is pretty smooth. And then it's got a Pretty well center blade, uh, maybe a little bit off to one side, but it's not rubbing and it's not moving there at the base. So, um, you know, pretty solid all the way around. Uh, after deployment, of course, comes ergonomics and oh boy, this is this melts into your hand real nicely. I mean, you've got a primary choil, you've got a forward choil, you've got some jimping back here. And my favorite thing, part of the reason that I'm so partial to that XM18 harpoon grind is because there's a place to put your thumb up on the blade. And this right here, this is awesome. I wish there were more knives out there like that. I love that they decided to put jimping up there. And I imagine that was, that's Ken Onion all the way, you know, doing that. Um, 
I haven't seen a lot of CRKT knives that I'm super interested in, and a lot of times I shy away from foreign-made knives. And by the way, this is not made in America. This is a Chinese knife, um, hence the price point, you know. Um, and uh, But, you know, gosh, the design of this is just so good. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Um, the money in this case, you know... This is in the field or the price range of the Spyderco Tenacious and the Ontario Rat and the Steel Wheel Cut Jack. And, you know, where the Rat and the Cut Jack, they kind of went for, you know, lower quality materials and, and not, not as crazy a design as this. And then they put more money into the blade steel. Uh, this this kind of went more, well, I don't want to say more the Rat of the Tenacious, but this is running uh, 8CR13 MOV steel, which is, it's okay. I mean, it's, I, I think it's similar to 440B or 440C, which is not, not a very good, I mean, that's not very descriptive because there's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of a difference between 440B and 440C. I've read that it, it is similar to, to 440C. I've read that it's similar to, to B, to, to OS8. It's somewhere in there. I'm not a metallurgist. I can't really explain it. It's going to have, it's got like less than 1% uh, carbon and it's got 13% chromium. So I imagine it will, it's pretty stain resistant. It's not going to be super tough and it's not going to hold an edge very long. You're going to need to resharpen it. But this looks like a pretty friendly blade uh, for ger uh, general stropping. Um, so that's pretty cool. But in any case, uh, the ergonomics of this and where you would hold it to do your tasks, ugh. Awesome. Love it. This is a hollow ground, a high hollow ground blade with a uh, kind of an upswept tip. And then it almost, it kind of acts like it wants to be a sheep's foot, but it's not really the nature of this belly here and how it, how it goes up. But you, very utilitarian blade, very friendly for a lot of different tasks. And, you know, it slices super well. It was very sharp. Um, so, you know, really impressed with, with how they did the blade here. This is, this is a very utilitarian blade shape. And the way that this you know, disengages, the ease of disengagement, the deployment, all that. Um, let's do the, let's do the pocket test. Where did I throw my manix? It's over there. Okay. So in and out of the pocket, let's see if we can get her in there one hand. We can pull it out, deploy it, use it, retract it. And obviously she'll go back in the pocket because she did the first time. So excellent. Great. I'm not the biggest fan of this pocket clip. That, that thing's pretty pointy. And I will uh, admit that in this position, it's gonna, that's gonna create a hot spot, but, you know, whatever, I mean, some people really come down on knives for their pocket, uh, pocket, uh, clip designs, and for me, it's more so the position, and if it creates a hot spot, and I really, really hate it, then I'll just find a custom clip and replace it, um, if you are not a fan of tip up carry, uh, this is not uh, not going to be your favorite thing in the whole world because there is only one position you can uh, um, carry this knife in, and it is right hand tip up. So if you're left-handed or you don't like that pocket position, sorry, that's just the way that it is on this knife. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I can say about the pocket clip there. So pretty cool stuff, man. I am I am just a huge fan of that blade shape and that design. Um, you know. Is this knife worth buying over the Rat? Uh, is it worth buying over the, the Tenacious? I don't know. You know, they put the money in in the design and the the bearings and the look of this knife, and it's it's very it, it's a really good looking knife, and it functions really really well. This is going to come down to preference. You know, if you really 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 care about the blade steel, then the Rat's probably going to be better to you. But if you want a flipper that runs on bearings and you want to spend less than 50 bucks, this is a freaking sweet choice, you know? I don't know. You know, the Cut Jack doesn't run on bearings, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, the Cut Jack, I don't think, runs on bearings. But if you're wanting a flipper, it's probably going to between th be between this and the Cut Jack. I think this looks nicer than the Cut Jack, but it doesn't use D2 steel. So, you know, you're wanting a a flipper and you're, you're big into steel, the cut jack's probably going to be for you. But, uh, in any case, you know, God, this is an awesome choice. My first experience with CRKT was actually on one of my dad's job sites and I was helping him, uh, work and, and, uh, there was a knife left by one of his guys and no one claimed it. So it just sat in his truck forever. And I am 99% sure that it was an old, 
uh, CRKT M16. Um, I am almost 100% certain that's what it was. And that seems to be one of CRKT's flagship models. And it's okay. It, it looks like a weapon to me, you know. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was cool back then, but anymore, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. And, but other than the M16, which actually is a very popular model, there's a popular model. There's a lot of people who like it. Other than that, I haven't had much experience with CRKT, and I'm not super attracted to their models, and I'm definitely not attracted to their line of uh, stuff. You know, most of their stuff comes out of uh, China or, or maybe Taiwan, and I, you know, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of that. If you like CRKT, then don't let me, you know, knock you down. You guys can like whatever you like, but this one, which apparently came out in like 2015, holy moly, this is awesome. They nailed it here. No surprise with it being a Ken Onion design, but I'm just a big fan of this. Uh, here's something that I'm going to start doing that I don't do in other videos. I'm going to start, because I wave these knives around and I talk. and maybe, you know I don't know if some of you are wanting to look at specific parts of the knife, and I'm not allowing you to because I'm waving it around. So I'm going to do kind of a silent, kind of what I did with the uh, M4 PM2 yesterday. I'm going to do kind of a silent scan so you can see everything. Flip her over to the other side. Pretty good looking. Let's see if we can get inside there a little bit. Flip it over to the spine. Real nice, real nice. I imagine deconstruction of this knife will be pretty simple. You do have three screws that go through this uh, scale slash overlay thing. Um, and then you've got uh, three screws on this side, the two pocket clip screws, and then you've got the uh, non-show side part of the pivot. And it looks like it's pretty basic construction. So you're going to have one, two, three, four um, scale pieces in total, the pocket clip. Uh, six body screws, two parts of the pivot, two pocket clip screws. So yeah, there's kind of quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit of parts on there. I don't know why I made that noise, um, but uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to take apart. But in any case, this is an impressive model, you know. And depending on what you value in a folding knife, and you know, if you don't mind sharpening, uh, you know, your blades, and and maybe you appreciate uh, uh, more corrosion resistance than D2. And you know, in this case, you don't mind sharpening, and you and you. Uh, uh, would prefer more corrosion resistance then and, and you're a big fan of bearings and and uh, flipper knives then man you know I, I'd say go for this one this is this is a fantastic knife um, and the the uh, like I said the blade design and the grind is excellent for well I'd imagine processing meat and, and small game but also a whole slew of uh, utilitarian tasks so really impressive but uh, that's pretty much it for today guys I just wanted to talk about this for a little bit um, again thank you so much to everybody who's been liking my videos and subscribing to my channel um, I'm really really happy with the growth uh, that I've seen you know we're uh, we're still a small channel um, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see that it's growing and that people are taking interest in these videos that's so fun uh, for me so if you enjoy that or if you want to be a part of something new and, and watch this channel grow or, or be a part of it with me as it grows, then please like this video and subscribe and, and turn the notifications on, you know, and comment on the videos, you know, tell me what you like or don't like. I'm very open to everybody's opinion and I, I you know, I'll, I'll never come down on somebody for liking something different than um, than, uh, than what I like or having a different opinion of me. I just enjoy the discussion. I, I have a passion for knives and folding knives specifically and other everyday carry items. And I just really, really enjoy doing this. So, uh, check out my other content. There's lots of other stuff, uh, both expensive and inexpensive knives that I either do or don't like. And if you enjoy that, like I said, please subscribe. Uh, other than that, you know, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching and have a great day.